Hi, everybody. Welcome back to a very special edition of RVA SEC 2022, Richmond, Virginia. Our next guest, Mr. Alex Nettie. He's the CEO and co-founder of High. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to a very special edition of RVA SEC 2022, Richmond, Virginia. Our next guest, Mr. Alex Nettie. He's the CEO and co-founder of High systems.io. Mr. Alex, welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, great to be here, Chuck. Thanks for having me. Now, I've done about 3,000 shows. I've seen a lot of very clever names. Yours caught me as one of those clever names when you say Hive Systems. I just think of an infrastructure, a network, everybody's connected, symbiotic relationships. Tell us what you guys do. Uh, Hive Systems is a cybersecurity services firm. So we focus on leveraging uh, our expertise uh, and our knowledge of security industry to help businesses get better about cybersecurity. Uh, ultimately, the name came from the idea that within a beehive, everybody in a, a bee or as a bee in a beehive has a job. They have a role whether to make honey, take care of the young, or even uh, to figure out how to make and build and expand the hive. At the end of the day, though, every single bee has one sole responsibility on top of their other duties, which is to protect the hive. Uh, we think that cybersecurity is the same way. It's about uh, enabling businesses to do what they do best, but do it securely. Yeah, that's a great way to look at it. And it does make a lot of sense. Tell me, what are some of the methods effectively, for effectively communicating cyber attacks to business leaders? Here's what I find. I got the gray hair. My people at my age are C-level people now that, you know, I grew up with them when they were young and now they're older. We didn't quite get the technology. Our generation wasn't quite there, right? And so this language is very important. How do, how do you get this across to them? Uh, that's a great question. I gave a great talk about this at RVA Sec. It comes down to three main areas. The first is when you're looking at cybersecurity attacks and how to deal with incidents and communicate it up to executives, are your answers and what you're telling them actionable? Are you just posturing? Are you giving ideas? Are you talking deep technical jargon? If you're not giving answers that are actionable or things that could be actionable in the near future, that's not helpful. You're not bridging that gap between you as a technical expert and those executives. Uh, that takes to the second point, which is about managing expectation, uh, expectations. Uh, you need the best info to be the best at your job. The same goes for all of those executives, whether they're HR, finance, or even just anybody from the C-suite. If you as the expert and the subject matter expert give the best information to them, they can make the best decisions about how to do their jobs the best. The final piece, constantly communicating, uh, especially in incident, things change and happen so quickly. And your role as a cyber incident responder isn't the entirety of how to deal with the incident of the company. So you have to constantly communicate what's going on, what are the expectations, when are things going to happen, and make sure that all of that is actionable. So that's very well said. When I was at Fox back in 1999, we had the Nile service attack. I'm not even sure they called it that back then. <laughs> it was kind of a brand new concept, right? <laughs> and, and I had to explain to the, the lawyers upstairs, hey, you know, somebody sent 350,000 emails and shut down our network. Well, what, why? What, why would they do that? Because they wanted to watch NASCAR and you were putting on a baseball game instead. That's why. And they didn't get it. Now, I wasn't good at translating that information to them because I was trying to translate it in the technical terms I knew about, right? Email attacks, and all service, cookies, blah, blah, blah. They didn't get that part. So what's the best way to prepare business leaders for a cyber attack? It, you you got to get the vernacular correct. And, and what's interesting to me is business leaders are all about risk. That's how they grew their business in the first place. So uh -huh. they're, not, they're not adverse to risk, but they do need actionable information, like you said, to do something. Otherwise, they're not running their business. So how do we prepare them for, for these things that are inevitable, really? Uh, great question, Chuck. One of the big things that we think about with all of this uh, communication, this jargon gap between executives and leaders in cybersecurity, is cybersecurity, we have all this deep technical jargon that we use day in and day out. But executives also have their jargon. And most of them we laugh at and say they're colloquialisms like synergy and holistic. <laughs> but there's a happy ground in the middle. I don't think one of us needs to go to the other side. And ultimately, from our side within the cybersecurity realm, we say, hey, we need executives better understand cybersecurity because it's here and it's here to stay. But as cybersecurity leaders and practitioners, we need to understand what's driving the business. At the end of the day, our job in cybersecurity is about protecting the business and reducing risk for the business. So if we're not also taking that step towards the middle as well, we're doing a disservice to the company. The best way to make all this happen and to find that common ground, 
practice. Run those cybersecurity drills and incidents. Find what words resonate with the executives and help them understand some of the terminology that there's just no other way except to use cybersecurity jargon to describe. If your executives don't understand what a DDoS attack is, you need to help them understand what the general concept is behind it and more importantly, what it means to the business. Now, that's the secret sauce. And of course, the end game is to get money to do what? Defend the network. And that's always tricky. So I had a guy, uh, one of the chief financial officers at Fox asked me during my budget talks one year, you know, can you guarantee me if I increase your budget that we won't have any more attacks? I was not cyber by the way, I was physical. And, he's, and I said, no, I can't guarantee something that might happen. He goes, okay, good. Cut the budget by 50%, right? And we did, and guess what? what? Nothing happened. Really, we didn't have any increase in anything, right? Mm -hmm. So that was, a, that was a big risk he took, but he, mm -hmm. he regained the money. So how can a cyber attack be used nowadays to, to leverage additional resources, you know, money, people, technology? That's, a, that's an area that really, in my mind, needs more resources and money than any other place in your business, absent your widget factory, whatever you're building or selling, right? And uh, nowadays, that's hard to sell. How do we do it? It is hard to sell, right? Cybersecurity is often not viewed as a new center, right? It's not viewed as something that's uh, necessarily contributing to the business. Even IT for years wasn't something that contributed to the business. But I think business leaders have started to recognize that it is important. When the email system goes down, nobody can work. And so they started to see that value. We're starting to enter the realm where leadership and executives are starting to understand that cybersecurity is a big piece of that puzzle. Contributing funds, setting aside the resources, and helping cybersecurity excel ultimately reduces downtime for the business, especially here in the digital age where everything is electronically connected. That means those widgets can no longer be produced. So investing in cybersecurity is important. As a cybersecurity practitioner, that's about taking things like those cybersecurity drills that you're going to run, or even a real incident, and having that root cause analysis. What happened, and how do we reduce the risk of this happening again? Is it more people watching the network? Is it a new tool, or is this just a force majeure event that we could never prevent again? But at least we're going to be prepared to deal with in terms of communicating and understanding the expected downtime. Just because you have a method of addressing it doesn't mean it has to fix the problem, but at least you knowing more about how to handle and manage it in a future incident that's similar, that's the main goal and objective here. Alex Nady, he's the CEO and co-founder, HiveSystems.io. Well said, my friend. Very concise. And, you know, as a co-founder, uh, I know you have a passion about this, and it definitely comes across in the way you're, you're presenting to us today. So thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure you had a good time at RVA <laughs> 2022 because we were in a post show, uh, but I hope to see you at Black Cat maybe online, virtual. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Chuck. I appreciate it. Um, the speech, uh, and I believe the presentation from RVA Sec is supposed to go online here. Uh, we're going to republish that on our website at www.hivesystems.io slash hive live. And you should be able to see that here in the coming weeks. All right. Beautiful. Thanks again, my friend. Good luck. Thanks for having me, Chuck.